Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and we're going to go into three variable systems. Let's get started right away. What I want to first do is just highlight the steps that normally are used to help solve these kind of systems. These are it here. What you'll want to do is you want to take a system and you want to write it in triangular form, and some textbooks refer to it as row echelon form. After you've done that, what you'll want to do is you'll want to back substitute in order to solve the system. Basically what it is is that you're trying to figure out the one point that all three planes intersect at. These would be the steps that you would use to help rewrite a system in triangular form. So how about we get started with one problem. Let's say you get something like this. You might note that this is already in triangular form. In other words, this part here is absent. By triangular form, we mean that we have three variables in the first equation, two variables in the second equation, one in the third equation. If you have that, then you have triangular form. So what you would do then is you would just simply back solve. In other words, start with the last equation first, and then solve for z. Then once you've done that, you would go to the second equation, and you would substitute in for z that answer. So that's negative 4y minus z is equal to 2, plug in 2, and then solve for y. Now once you've gotten that, then you take your solutions for z and for y, and you plug back into the first one. So you're kind of going in reverse here. So write that first one now, plug in your answers for y and z, then solve for x. Now once you've gotten all three solutions, then you just simply write it as one point, x, y, and z. And just like that, you figured out the one point that all three planes intersect at. All right, how about we try another? This time, a little more complex, where the triangular form is not done for us yet. Let's say we got something like this. Now, for the record, these equations do not have to be written in this order. You could, in fact, just take this one, for example, and make that your third equation. Up to you, really. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this in triangular form first. And remember, what that means is this. The terms in these particular locations are end up going to be gone. So what we'll do is we'll first target this x right here, this x next, followed by this y term last. To help us organize our work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the scratch work written on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side is just simply going to be the result of each transformation. So let's eliminate this term. The way we do that is we combine the first equation with the second equation. I've numbered these here, so that way you'll, that'll help with reference. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's combine equation 1 with equation 2. We're going to be using elimination, which basically means that whatever the value is here, if you multiply it to the first row, and then take this value, multiply it to the second row, we can get the same number here. So let's do that. Multiply that by 3, and this is what we get. Here, we'll multiply by negative 2, not just 2, because we want both of these to be opposites. So if we multiply this whole thing by negative 2, that's multiplied to the 3, the negative 3, the negative 1, and the 5, what we get is this. So we can go ahead and combine these. These cancel out. This gives you 9y, negative 4z, and negative 13. So what happens is this. Since we were targeting a term here in the second row here, in our next step here, this is going to be the new second row. As you'll notice, I rewrote the first row again, and we're going to keep that the same throughout. But this second row now is going to be replaced by this result. So now let's shift our attention to this term right here. In order to eliminate this term, which is again also an x, what we're going to do is we're going to combine this third row here with one of the first two. And it doesn't matter, just simply pick one. In this particular case, I'll choose the first row. That means multiplying the top here by 1, because that's the coefficient of this x term, and then multiplying this row here by negative 2, because that's the coefficient. And remember, we want these to be opposite. So if you multiply this top one by 1, 
and this bottom one by negative 2, this is what you get. Just go ahead now and do the math. These cancel out. These collect together to give you 5y. These give you negative 8z. And then the last part is negative 13. So what happens now is this. We were targeting a term in the third equation. Therefore, this result is going to be our new third equation. So again, to highlight, we did an operation to give us a new second equation. We know it's a new second equation because we removed the term from the second equation. Here, to remove the term for the third equation, we combine with one of the others to give us a new third equation. So you have a new 2, a new 3. First one remains the same. Now let's go ahead and target this term. The reason why we want to do that is because, again, we want triangular form. And in this triangle, whatever terms that are there have to be gone. So what we want to wind up with is three variables on top, two in the middle, one in the end. The way we do that is to combine these two bottom equations. Take the second one here and multiply by 5 and then this third one here and multiply by negative 9. Remember the idea is to make these both the same only opposite in sign. So if there's a 5 here you multiply 5 here. 9 here you multiply 9 here. Now doing so gives us this so when we combine them, what we wind up with is these gone. That's 52z, and then this winds up as just 52. All right, so here's the deal. In our next transformation here, your first and second equations remain the same. It is the third one, though, that gets replaced. The reason why it gets replaced is because, again, we were targeting this term, remember? And now we are ready to solve. The next thing to do now is to just back substitute. Once you have this written in triangular form, that's all that there is left to do. You start with the third equation, and then go back to the second equation, and then the first one. Starting off with this one, and you get z is equal to 1. Then when you go to the next one, you just plug in 1 for z, and then solve for y. And then once we have our solution to y, we plug back into the top equation and then solve for x. Then just go ahead and write your solution as a point and that is it. Let's do one last one here. Find the equation, the quadratic equation, whose graph passes through these three points. Now hopefully you recognize that this is a parabola. Now one thing, if you're taking uh, major tests, like an SAT test for example, they will often present you with problems where they'll give you points, but then there's missing information for an equation. And the trick to doing that is always the same, no matter what level, whether you're just simply in your first year algebra or if you're doing something more advanced like calculus, and that is this. When they give you points for an equation that is incomplete, you take those points and you plug them in. So that's what we're going to do here. And we're going to do this one point at a time. Now for each point you plug in, you get an equation. So if you have three points, you have three equations. Here's the first one. I want you to note that we chose negative 2, 7. So negative 2 is the x. And that went in here, here, and that's it. This isn't an x. 7 the y, so that went here. So that's a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c is equal to 7. Do the same thing for the other points. For 1, negative 2, plug in 1 for x and negative 2 for y. Then do the same thing for 2, comma 3. Now if you simplify those, what you wind up with is this. This gives you 4a minus 2b plus c equals 7. That's what you're seeing here. This gives you a plus b plus c is negative 2. Then 4a plus 2b plus c equals 3. And then what you would do is you would solve this system. How about we go ahead and do that right now? Just as before, we'll put a dividing line in between. 
On the left hand side we'll have the result of our transformations and then on the right hand side will be our scratch work. Just as before we want to write this in triangular form which means that these three terms have to go. So what we want to do is focus on one at a time. We'll do this one first, then this second, then this third. To do that first one we're going to combine it with the first equation. That means multiplying this by negative four and the top one by one and we wind up with this. Combine your terms together. This cancels out. Negative 6b, negative 3c, 15. And remember what that means. This replaces our second equation because we were targeting this term right here in the second row. Now let's worry about this term right here. We want this to be gone just as we zeroed out this one. So now we'll go ahead and combine this with either the first one or with the second one. In this particular case, I'll choose the first one again. For us, that just simply means multiplying by negative one on the bottom. So the first one remains the same. This third one, when you multiply by negative one, gives us this. If we do that, these cancel out, as do these two here and we're left with negative 4b is equal to 4. So here's the deal. It isn't quite triangular form. However, we still have what we need. The basic idea is three variables on the first, two in the second, and one in the third. And we've accomplished that already, which basically means this. The next step, which was to combine the second and third ones, it's not necessary because we already have this down to just one term. Therefore, we are now done with this process. That means now we can just skip right ahead to back substituting and then solving. So for this last one, you get b is equal to negative 1. For the second one, you plug in negative 1 in for b, solve for c, and you get negative 3. And for that first one, plugging in both b and c, then solve for a. So now let's take a step back here. Under normal circumstances, you would think that we would be done. But we're not. Keep in mind what the question was asking for. Remember, we were supposed to find a quadratic equation that passes through these particular points. So if you're thinking that these are the answers, you're thinking that you're almost done. Keep in mind that the equation is what we want. So you'll want to take your answer to A B and C and plug them in. So that's your general equation. Plug in A, B, and C, and now we have what we want. So the process for this really isn't much different. In fact, in the middle, we had one less step, and then at the end, we had one extra step. But that's really all there is to it.